In this presentation, we're going to enter an adjusting entry related to accrued interest. Time for the accounting remedy of Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're going to go back up top to our reports, selecting the reports drop down. We want to take a look at those financial reports. We're going to look into that balance sheet report, our favorite report, the balance sheet report. We're at the February, so we want month two or period two. Uh, month two and period two, perhaps February 29th. We're going to be considering these uh, liability accounts down below once again. So we're going to be considering this second loan. Now the second loan's a little bit different, and this is going to be something that we could consider with any any kind of loan that is going to be outstanding. And in this case, in the first loan, we had a loan that was going to be uh, paid monthly. In the second loan, we've got a loan that we're going to be paying back all at the end of the time period. So we're probably more familiar with a type of loan where we where we break it out to a monthly payment. However, you can format a loan basically anytime, any way you want. And other types of business loans, we may have one set up where uh, we don't pay it back. And that's what we're going to say here. We're not going to pay back the interest or principal until the end of the loan period. So uh, that means that we're going to have interest that is accumulating upwards that we're not going to be paying uh, until the end of the loan period. And so we've incurred it. We haven't yet paid it. So that's going to be the accrued interest or the interest payable that we're going to have to be recording. Let's take a look at our loan balance. We're on the loan balance too. And let's just consider this type of loan uh, and what it might look like comparing the amortization kind of table uh, to, to what we would have in the last one. So if we said we had a $50,000 loan, for example, let's say it's going to be due in six months and there's going to be accrued interest on it at 6%. So then it's possible that we have terms like this and they don't even give you basically the, the, the actual amount that you're going to have to pay back at the end of the period because we should be able to basically figure it from here. And it's a useful formula to kind of look at. It's another common formula, which would be a future value formula. So let's use the future value formula to see what we would pay back then at the end of the loan period after six periods, after six months uh, with a future value formula. So to do that, I'm going to go, I'm going to go back up top and we're going to, we're going to take a look at our formulas up top. And this is one way we could do it. I'm going to insert a formula and I'm looking for a future value, which is the FV. So FV formula, future value. And then I'm going to say, okay. So there we have our little table again that we can use. Now I'm going to pick up the rate. The rate is going to be this 6%. So I'm going to select that 6%, but that's per year. So I want to take that and divide it by 12 and that'll give us the monthly rate. That's kind of the tricky component. So then the number of periods we're going to say is six periods. So we have six periods. The payment amount, this is the other tricky component here, is zero. We're not, there is no payment amount because we're not making, uh, making payments. So we're not going to put anything there or you could put zero there. And then we're going to go to, to the present value, which is what the current value is at this point in time, which is going to be the 50,000. So we're currently at the 50,000. So that's what we have here. You can see the result will then be generated down below. Let's go ahead and say, okay. And there it is. If you double click on this, you can also populate this formula with this little data input chart, but uh, I won't get too into the Excel, you know, weeds with it. So now I'm going to make it a, a positive number by just double clicking on it. I usually just put a negative in front of the, the first item. So I'm going to in front of the function and that'll basically take the whole thing and multiply it by negative one or flip the sign. So there's the 51, 519. So in other words, we're going to say we have a loan now of the 50,000. We're going to have to pay back at the end of six months, 51,519, which includes the interest. Now, if we think about that on a, on a period by period basis, the question is, I still don't know how much, how much interest has incurred after each month, after each period. To do that, we can we could do a little amortization table here. Note that there's no payment being made here. So there's no payment, but we can do a similar kind of calculation for the interest. The interest would be uh, the loan balance, which we're starting off at period 150,000 times the 6%. That would be for a year. And then we're going to divide that by 12 because we're talking about months here. And so there's the 250. So the principal increase is, would basically be the 250. That means the new principal balance. And, I'm, and, and we might uh, record this not as a principal, but accrued interest, right? We got the principal plus the interest. So the, so the balance then is going to be the 50,000 plus uh, the 250. So if this terminology, if the principal doesn't 
if that bugs you, notice it's principal and interest. We have principal and interest here as well, what we're doing. So then we have uh, the payment. Again, no payment. I'm just copying a similar table that we used for the amortization table. And then we're going to say that now the interest is going to be that uh, 50250 which is higher now, right? Times the 6%, times the 6% divided by 12. And so it's going to be the same principal increase. And so here's the prior principal plus the increase. So you can see again that there's a change on the interest. So let's do this one more time. We're going to say the 50,000 times the, the, I'm sorry, the, this is the wrong cell. I'm going to put a zero here. And then we're going to do this over here. We're going to say this is going to be the 50,501 times the 6% and then take that and divide it by 12. All right. And there we have that. Now I'm going to see if we can. And then this is going to be the prior balance plus uh, the increase in principle. Now let's see if we could copy this down. I'm going to do this one at a time like we did last time. I'm going to select these cells, put our cursor on the autofill hand. And I'm going to autofill just one cell down to start with. So I'm going to autofill just one cell down. And you can see there's a problem. Where's that problem going to be? You might be able to guess. It's on the interest, right? The interest, this one moved down and we don't want it to. I want to use an absolute reference for that cell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to delete this whole row. Delete that. And go back to the interest. Double click on it. That cell, which is B3. I'm going to make an absolute reference by selecting, I'm going to put my cursor in that section and select F4. That puts a dollar sign before the B, a dollar sign before the three, making it an absolute reference. If I say enter, and then we try this again, and this time I'm going to assume it's correct and autofill basically all the way down. So, or all the way down. And so I'm going to just autofill all the way down. And there we have it. So there's the 51. 519 and there's the 51519 that kind of verify that this process has been done correctly now we're going to say that uh, one period has passed this period and that means that there's interest that that has has accrued that we have not yet paid so that's going to be the accrued interest this is interest this is like rent that has accrued like we used the money just like if we used the facilities uh, of, of a building or something like that and hadn't yet paid the rent well we still owe it it's, it's accrued so I'm going to record an adjusting entry for this, which is going to be increasing the interest expense on the other side going to a payable instead of increasing like the principal balance here at the loan balance. We'll put it into another liability account called uh, interest payable. So that's what we'll do here. So let's go back on over. We'll do that, of course, with a journal entry. So I'm going to go back up top to our tasks. We're going to go down to the journal entry. So we want to enter a uh, journal entries so we'll select that item it's going to be as of the cutoff date so that's going to be the 229 and the debit is going to be to the interest expense so let's see if they gave us an interest expense account that we can use so scrolling down looking for interest expense so we got income tax there and there's an interest expense that's the one and this i'm just going to call it an adjusting entry so that we can distinguish these adjusting entries the amount is simply going to be for that 250 so i'm just going to make the amount for 250 250 then the credit is going to go to a, to a payable account which is going to be uh, interest payable which we probably do not have yet so we have a lot of current liabilities accounts but i don't see interest payable so what I'm going to do then is make another account. I'm going to put it somewhere, you know, somewhere around here, uh, close to the, to the loan. So let's make it, uh, two, two, four, one, zero. I'll make it two, four, one, zero. I'm going to make a new account. And so I'm going to say we need a new account here. Account number two, four, one, one, zero, two, four, one, zero. And then the description I'm going to say is interest pay payable. That's what I, that's the terminology I like better. You can call it accrued interest if you so choose, uh, which you know could sound more formal to put, put accrued interest. But in any case, then I'm going to say that this is going to be a liability, other current liability type of account, other current liability. That's what we need. And then okay, we'll save that, close this. Then we'll record, the, then I got to pick the account. So I forgot what I called it already. 
So the account number then is, is if I scroll down here, we want the interest payable, the 2410. So there it is, 2410, that's gonna be a credit of the 250. So there we have it. Let's go ahead and save that and then record that and check out what happens to the old balance sheet. So there we have that. Let's go to the balance sheet. Then we're going to be saying that uh, in the current liabilities section, we have the interest payable of the 250. The other side is going to be on the income statement. So the income statement, if I go to the reports drop down, financial statements, we want to take a look now at the income statement, opening up the income statement for the second period or February, removing the zero balances and saying, okay, and then we can go down and we should have on the bottom line, the interest expense, interest expense. There it is. The uh, 846 is in there. I was looking for 250, but obviously we have other interest involved here as well. So there's the interest expense. There's our adjusting entry. Note that if we put adjusting entry, that could be helpful, of course, because then we can distinguish those end of period adjusting entries. So I'm going to close this back out. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.